a wreck. I had fear, anxiety, attack, and everything. I was really losing it. What if you lost all your luggage? And luggage did not came, so I had no clothes. I didn't have my Bible even. And you had nothing except your worship funds. Would that cause you to panic, fear? Would you be worried? Would you be a whiner? Or would you worship? We're gonna talk with a fire catcher today and find out about the transformation of what happened when she lost all her luggage at a very special women's conference in Jamaica. Stay tuned. Welcome fire catchers. My name is Andrea York with Catch the Fire Worship Flags. Today for another special edition of our fire catchers chat, I have a Canadian on <laughs> the broadcast with me. I'm so excited. This is the first Canadian that we've had. And she is, let me just so that you see her. This is Christine Williamson. She is on the East Coast kind of the east coast she lives in ottawa which is the capital city in canada uh welcome christine thank you for being on the broadcast thank you Hi. it's my pleasure <laughs> thank you for having so me i i always ask i actually always ask about food um first like regional food now we're both canadian and i wonder if we actually have some of the same canadian uh favorite foods do you like poutine Poutine. oh yeah <laughs> that's my comfort food that's I know it's a comfort food, right? So if you don't know what poutine is, it's fries and cheese curds and gravy. The most delicious thing. I love it. My husband actually does not like it. I don't know how you can't like like uh, poutine, but any other Canadian favorites or even like favorites that are in Ottawa, specifically specific to Ottawa? Well, it's pretty much poutine or fries and gravy. Pretty much I that I like. What about yeah, comfort food? Do you like beaver tails? Uh, yes, but not with really too much sugar, though. I like it, but it has to have hot chocolate with it. Ah, uh, yes. Or apple cider. Yeah. Is it apple cider? No, it's the apple. The hot oil. apple cider. Yes. Yeah. Ah. Yes. Oh, you know, I've, I've had some really interesting comments over the, over the years that we've been talking about this. So again, I want to say thank you for joining me. We had a conversation and we were just kind of talking a little bit before we came on. And you were reminded, we set this up about a month ago that we were going to have this conversation. So I needed to be a little bit reminded. And again, af upon what you were just sharing with me, I was astounded. I'm so excited about what we're going to talk about and what you have to share and impart. I know that you're actually fairly new to Worship Flags. So can you tell us how you became acquainted and how you got started with Worship Flags? Well, it was during the pandemic. And I, during that time, I was very, um, afraid I was I had anxiety attack and I had a lot of things going for me I wouldn't go out I wouldn't I would listen to church online a lot I would read my bible a lot and I would most of the time I would sleep and with my bible and play my bible because I was just afraid of everything everything I was paranoid to 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 be real to be honest but for me to come to the point where I started worshiping with flags is like this one night I was sleeping in one of my rooms and I felt this shaking when my whole body started to shake and I got scared and I ran out from that room and I ran into another room and I put my head to the foot of the bed and I lie there and I may have dozed off again but then my body started shaking again and shaking and I could hear this sound from my room from the hallway of my room because I had the doors open saying that God is to be worshipped. You got to worship God. God is to be worshipped. But it's not a voice like it's a human voice. It's like an angelic. It's something that I cannot really describe. I've never heard it before. It's like a crystal clear timbre. Like just, uh, it's just beautiful. And it says, God is to be to be worshipped. You have to worship God. You have to worship God. It's to be worshipped. And I woke up with my motto in that I have to worship God. I have to worship God. And I love to dance. So I find myself having, worshipping in a different way that I used to, in terms of when I worship, I find that I worship with my hands. I started to use my hands to worship, and then I dance. And I find my hands, you know, started to move. And when church opened, actually, and I, I go in, I went into the building, I started to use my hands, and persons would really gravitate to the fact that how oh, I worship, how oh, it was different. And I started searching for flags. Because I said, if 
it came into my spirit, why not use flags instead of my hands? So I started searching and I went on the internet. I searched through Amazon and other uh, media for it, but I couldn't, I, I didn't feel it within my spirit to purchase. I needed someone, I needed to be connected to, to the person to make, that made the flag for some reason that was in my spirit. And I went online and I saw Catch a Fire uh, flags. And I actually called you and spoke to you and I had no clue of what I was looking for. And you were so nice. You spoke to me and you asked me about my colors and what am I feeling, what it is saying to me. And I was able to describe how I was feeling about worshiping and what I'm seeing. And you sent me the first flag and it was special. And the way how you told me how you have came about getting or, or making this flag, how God have birthed it in your spirit and the way how you pray for these flags and everything, I felt the connection that, yes, this is where I need to go to, to get my flags because it all has to be, it's not just to make a flag and sell it. It has to be coming from, the, the Lord has to ordain it. So I find that when I got my flag, it was special. So anyway, going moving forward, I had this convention to go to in Jamaica and I lost everything except my flag. When I said I lost everything, this convention coming back to Ottawa that Bishop had asked me to. Anyway, the ladies at the retreat, they took care of me. They gave me all the clothing, all the necessary things that I needed. And I had my flag. And that, that was my friend. <laughs> I had, like, everywhere I'm going, in the convention, I had my can flag. I just, I can... can I just interrupt for just a second to <laughs> ask? Okay, so I, telling the story now, we can, it's easy to say it was, everything was enough. But was there a moment, how was your heart feeling in that moment when you're like, literally the only thing you had was your flag? Did you have a moment at all or were you just at peace? I was at peace. I had one of the lady came to me and said, I watch you. Actually, when I came back to Canada, one lady called me, I think she was in England. She said, I will never forget you. You did not have anything you worship like no one else business and you had your flag and you run around that building with that flag up and i looked at you and i said look at that long lady she doesn't have no clothes nothing is per the clothes that she's wearing is just given to her but she is just worshiping that flag like i had peace i didn't miss all i've got because i had the worship inside of me and I felt when I hold those flags I felt like I could fly I felt like I was in a different world it's like the grace and the spirit of God just was just with me and I was just it's just something I could not explain I felt like I had the power I felt anointing I felt the spirit of God all over me so I, I knew that God had that called me to really worship with flags. So I did, uh, throughout that, that time that we were there, I, as I said, I had peace. But one thing happened, and I was, because I had the, the ministry to come back to, to worship for, and it was my first time. I never worshiped with flags before. So I was getting up early in the morning on the, the resort and practicing outside. I didn't care who looked at me. I did not care who were watching. I was worshiping with my, my nobody's business, with even my music on the ground, in my, in my ear, whatever. I was worshiping with my flag because I fell in love <laughs> with a new, I fell in love with a different way of worshiping. So on my way back home, I had my flags, I had my luggage and everything. I went in the line, in the lineup, and I forgot that I needed something to eat. So I went back and I met one of the ladies that was at the conference and I started talking to her. I put my flag down. I went to buy something and then I say bye and I was off. On my way up, I saw another lady that I've never met and I was telling her about the convention and something said, Chrissy, Christine, something is missing. And I'm saying to myself, what is missing? And I said, I have my luggage. And I said, something is missing. And then I realized I left my flag. And I'm like, God, I'm in this airport in Montego Bay. It's busy. 
And I'm saying, God, my flag is ready. It's boarding. What am I going to do? I need my flag. It's like my world just tumbled down because I could lose everything else. But my flag, where is my flag? I need my flag to worship. It's like a part of me was missing. So I ran through the airport, looking everywhere that I'd stopped. It was nowhere to be found. And on my way back up, well, actually one of the uh, person on the plane said to me, Miss Williamson, we're boarding. I said, my flag, my flag, my flag. I said to her, and then on my way back up, I said, God, I don't know what I'm gonna do. But all I know, I look back and I saw this lady with my flag up in the airport was waving it. And I said, oh my God, yes, I'm looking for this, it's my flag, thank you. And I took it from her and it's like, my God, I'm like, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. I don't know how I would have felt coming back to Canada without it, because it had come, become a part of me. And I tell you something, um, Andrea, I came back home to Canada, to Ottawa, and I went and I uh, ministered at that church. I was in so much pain, but I ministered to this song, My Soul Says Yes. First song I ministered to with that flag, actually ministered to. And persons told me how they were blessed. I could hear in the audience when I spin, remember, I didn't know to use this flag, but when I spinned around, I could hear persons was just praying to God. It's like something just unleashed because I said, God, when I wave this flag, I want the spirit of God to just unleash in this building. That's how I feel when I worship in God, when I worship with my flags. When I pick my flag up, pick up the spirit of God, there's something that my armor, and I just unleash the spirit of God in the building. That's all, I, and that's how I feel, and that's how I would like it to be. So, yes. <laughs> you are such a powerful intercessor, and someone might say, "Well, it's not about the flag; it's about worship. It is the heart of worship." But the Lord has actually put plagues in your hand as a tool, and it does make declarations and it changes and shifts the atmosphere. Yes. If the heart was not there, the Lord would not give you such a powerful weapon or a powerful tool to use in breaking um, strongholds within the atmosphere with, right? Like, it, I just want to make it clear that it's not the, it's not the flag that we're worshiping no. is it is the power of God on yeah. that, on the yeah. worship that he steps in. It, it almost is like, it reminds me of, uh, first Chronicles 20, where the people are going, Jehoshaphat is going against the, the Amorites and they just stand and worship and the Lord does the ambush. But if they did not worship, the Lord would not be able to come in and do that. Or he, he can, he's the Lord, he can do it, but he chooses to partner with us. That's the thing. He chooses to partner with us. And, and uh, the, uh, just what a wonderful testimony of we're talking about God putting the provision in your hands, even a second time so that you did not lose that. And yeah. you have an, a second testimony of what happened. So that's fantastic. Now you talked, I think be, we talked a little bit before and you'd said that how your worship had changed since from the yes. before to having that compelling in your spirit when in the night and with that also came that was your commissioning it wasn't that the lord that he was just telling you to do something he was giving you a calling and you said yes you said yes to your calling you said yes to that commissioning you said yes to the mission and the lord is i believe the lord is going to be taking you far more places because of that anointing you have a going anointing and you have a regional anointing that wherever you go you are releasing the word of the lord you are releasing it and making it possible for others in, in those areas to receive the goodness of god from directly from his hand and tell us like can you explain in words? Sometimes it's harder to explain in actual words or language, but how would you describe how your worship has changed as a result of picking up flags, which really was less than a year ago? Yeah, my worship has changed a lot. I find when I worship, it's like, it's not, a, not me, myself. When I'm through worshiping, I don't remember. I don't remember. 
I worship from a, it's like a different level. And oftentimes in church, I sometimes apologize. I said, it's not that I go around, I scream, but my worship, my dance and everything, my worship is just different because it comes from a deep place, a deep place. It has a deeper meaning. I find myself now, even when I worship and I listen to songs, I try to listen to the real meaning of the song. And even for sometimes I worship to the older hymns, I will find myself go back to read and to say why this hymn was written and when it was and what's the cause of it. It's a different more for research. Why? And that caused me to have a deeper feeling, a deeper relationship with God. And um, the worship that comes out of me, it's deeper than it was before. It's not like it's it's on the surface. Like, you know, before I go to church, I'll worship. But now I find that it's just different and I cannot control it. And when I pull my flag out, it's like, I feel like I am ready to just fight war. It's like a war. And it's just, it's an unleash the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's there, but you unleash it, unleashing a deeper power. There's a lot of similarities between Rosie Robinson. I don't know if you've seen one of the fire catchers chat with her. I can hardly wait to see and hear more testimonies from you in the future because there is such a breaker anointing on you. And the Lord is going to put you in those places where he needs someone with authority to walk into who knows their authority without being ignorant about, about what is actually happening in the spirit. The Lord is going to open up bigger vision, bigger seer anointing so that you can see more clearly. And I love what you mentioned about that you don't even remember. I think that that is always a sign of just touching the divine. Like it is so encompassing that it's quite overwhelming when you're fully in the presence of God that we can't comprehend all of the things that are happening. There's the physical sensation and even worshiping with your body, there's the physical being physically spent in worship with, you know, body, soul, and spirit. I think that that's so beautiful. And thank you for sharing. I, I, <laughs> is this the first time you've, you've traveled with your worship flags? Yes. It's the first time I was supposed to go to uh, Trinidad this month but because of certain circumstances I am not able to go because we are my I one of my girlfriend she's a pastor and they're doing um, actually out of the pandemic the Burton room and it's a prior line that they have every almost every morning and um, they're having their fourth anniversaries so we are having the um, it in Trinidad, so I was supposed to go to worship there, but um, I couldn't go because of certain circumstances. <laughs> but yeah, so there, will, there will be many, many, many more more opportunities where you're going to raise a flag and lift up a banner and make declarations uh, as as the word of the Lord goes out. What would you say to someone who is maybe just starting out and? feels that trembling, but is still feeling inhibited, what would you say to someone who might have been you like a year or two ago? I would say seek the Holy Spirit, just to pray, seek God, seek the Holy Spirit, and also to find like-minded persons to, to really talk to, because there are persons that sometimes they're not walking in the same way or they're not seeing things the same way. And God call us all, you know, they're preachers, they're what, you know, so if you find the worshipers, you find true worshipers, they're worshipers and they're worshipers. So you need true worshipers. So this is where you're going to seek. I tell always that person, seek the, the discern, discernment of the Holy Spirit. And that's something I pray for. I pray for discernment of the Holy Spirit. I don't pray for material things in this world. I don't. I pray for the Spirit of God to be with me and to show me things of the Spirit and to help me to grow in Him and to do the things that He wants me to do, not that I want to do, but He wants me to do, to help me to understand and to lead me in that path. And wherever He wish, whatever He does, I will have to obey and I will have to go. So that's my heart, that's my desire to just continue to walk and to love God with all my heart, soul, and body, and mind. And if anyone come alongside and I can help, I'll help them to, to, to walk that way. 
you know. I've had persons in my church that actually they want me to teach the kids to do flags. And I haven't because I said I cannot as it's not I am not ready as yet because I just don't do flags because or dance with my flag because it's fun, it's nice. It's it's not nice, it's not a fun, it's not a, it's a worship thing from an inner place. And yes, we can have the kids, I am saying just from where I am sitting in my church. We can have the kids play with their flags and teach them. But it's not a, it's not a toy. It's not a toy. Like, you know, if I would put my I said, please don't touch it, it's not a toy. I'm very protective of it because it's my weapon. I feel it's my weapon. So um, for others who want to grow in this, I always tell them to just seek the Holy Spirit and pray and ask God to direct them and to find like-minded persons that who are in deep in the spirit and who really love God on the same page or even on a higher page to help them to grow. Community, finding community, having people spurring one another on, inspiring one another to go deeper and deeper in things of the Lord. And it is again and again, we say it, it is inner working. What you see in worship, that's just a lot of the display of what's really inside. Uh, and that's when you touch that, when you see that, there's something that affects and changes and shifts the atmosphere. Would you pray for fire catchers that they <laughs> have peace in this? And, and if they're, if the Lord is calling them to step into it, what I find remarkable that you said yes with gusto. Now you heard the divine voice compelling you. So I don't know how it would have gone for you if you hadn't obeyed that voice. Because when the Lord says something and we don't, it doesn't usually go well. But yeah. what you responded with a gusto, and I just feel like that there's people that might be watching that are on the precipice of stepping into what God has called them to truly step is, into similar callings in a commission. Would you pray for them? Sure, I will. Sure. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, God, for caring for us. We thank you, God, for teaching us. And we thank you, God, for loving us. We thank you, Father, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, into this world to die for our sins. And we thank you, Lord, for not taking just your son back, but leaving your Holy Spirit. Because Jesus came and he died for us. And he said he's gone to prepare a place for us, but he didn't leave us comfortless. But he left us your Holy Spirit. So while we are here on this earth, Father, we pray that you will help us that we will listen to your Holy Spirit and we will obey when he speaks to us and whatever direction of Father that he leads us that we will heed and we will obey and we will follow. I pray for every fire catchers that persons who have found it in their spirit that this is what they would like to do or this is where you're calling them. I pray that you may help them to understand and help them to grow and help them to find that community that they may light up the world for you and that others may come to know you and to to understand and to draw closer to you because you are the only wise god you are all that we should seek after for there is nothing else left in this world father god so lord i thank you lord for just coming into our spirit and teaching us what we need to know. Father, I just thank you for this ministry. I thank you, God, for birthing this ministry for us, oh God, so this way we can worship you, Lord, because you said there are different ways that we can worship you. We worship you on the drums, we worship you in singing and dancing and flagging, Father God. So, Father, we just thank you for this time. We just thank you for all that you've given us. And I pray, Lord God, for the founder of this ministry. I pray, oh God, that you continue to instill in her, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you continue to cover her and her family and whatever she does, oh God. The ministry, oh God, I pray, Lord God, that you may keep them, oh God. And I pray, oh God, that as person comes, oh God, and as they seek and as they get their flags, Father God, I pray, oh God, wherever they walk, wherever they go, Father, they will just, the Holy Spirit will be with them and Whatever they do, oh God, that it will be of you, God. And it's not for sure for entertainment, but Father God, that it's for your glory. 
So I thank you, God, for this time, and I give you praise, honor, and glory. In your name I pray. Amen. And thank you so much. I think that was powerful, your powerful prayer, your powerful intercessor. I think you know that you touched you touched the heart of God in that. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, thanks so much for doing <laughs> What? Uh, tell me, which one of your Catch Fire Worship Flags is your favorite? Can you say? I don't know as yet um, because I just have the two that I have right here, but I'm still looking at others. I am thinking, I don't know, uh, because I'm still trying to learn the colors. And I'm looking at gold because I am trying to read some of what you said about the colors. Uh, so I'm still learning. So I don't know. I remember when we spoke, I said I like orange. So you gave me this orange. Orange is my favorite color. And you gave me this orange and red, bluish one. That's the one I got first. You, you have beautiful offering. That's actually my favorite. <laughs> and I love it so much. So um, I am not sure I, uh, which one as yet. It, you know what? It's really, really hard to have... Uh, <laughs> I say they're all my favorites because each flag does represent different things. It's different seasons, different seasons in your life that you pick. I pick up some flags more than others. Then there's some flags that I always have a like beautiful offering when I really just don't know what else to do or how my heart is expressed. Beautiful offering, like the woman came, interrupted the dinner party to pour, pour worship out on Jesus's feet because she was oh compelled. Oh, she's compelled to do that um that's probably when all else fails that's the one i go to because i don't know how else release that built up energy in my body to, to worship the lord so you already mm -hmm. have that one thank you so much for is joining the us one? I, I, um, is that the, the the one the praise one that this is the one that you you talk about with the lady at the, um, at the yes. alabaster box yes you know it's so funny because i was thinking of um, worshiping to that song because i love that song so much and i find myself a lot of times when i pray i find myself like those ladies actually I pray uh, from a, a level of where I am the woman with the issue of blood and I'm crawling through all others who are calling to God and praying and asking God. I'm that little one who's crawling there and say, Lord, this is this me. Remember me. I'm here touching. I am here. I'm here. So I find I humble myself down and says, I am me. I am here. Everyone else says, see, I'm here. Remember me down here. So <laughs> love it. I love that. That's actually, that's actually dropping some creativity in my spirit of launching something new. Love where I, the ideas come from. Christine, thanks again. I want to just thank you. And if you are, have a, your own testimony, we would love to talk to you in a fire catchers chat. We want to hear what, how worship has changed you. Please let me know. You can email us our information is down below. If you appreciate what we're doing for you, please like and subscribe. And so you'll know when we post more videos. Thanks sure. again. Until next time. Bye.